I got a mystery package from Singularity Computers. Hope it's not fragile. The ViewSonic X24K LED projector is the world's first projector designed for Xbox consoles, featuring screen sizes up to 120 inches, native refresh rates up to 240 hertz, built-in Harman Kardon speakers, and low latency gaming modes. The X24K gaming projector from ViewSonic delivers a truly customizable experience for both gaming and HDR cinema. To see our full-length video covering features and user experiences, follow the links in the description below. I think I know what it is actually. I think it's their water box which actually might come in handy because one of the things I've been needing to do, this is in the way, one of the things I've really been needing to do is have like a quick disconnect type of like fully assembled loop that's always ready to go. So when I'm testing water cooling for some sort, I can just tubes and quick disconnect on the component and, and off it goes. But one of the biggest problems with that is uh, having to put up you know, a pump and a res and radiators and all that. So I want to see what this is. I think this, they said their water box is on the way. Ugh. All right. So let's. Okay. Oh, that was probably more fragile than I sh shouldn't have been doing that. Probably <laughs> I didn't realize it's acrylic. Sorry, Daniel. I didn't know it was. Okay, I didn't hurt it, thank God. Okay, yeah, so this is their water box. So the whole point about this is this isn't just about like having a standalone water cooling tester or whatever. It's, you, it's about external water cooling. So if you wanted to ha add radiators to anything, maybe that doesn't fit inside a system super cleanly, old cases or whatever, then you can utilize this. So this is their 240 by 240. So it's two 240 millimeter rads will fit in here. He did say that they have a um, 560 version as well, dual 560s, which is like two four times 420s. <laughs> I want one of those. So we take a look at this. This has their same like aluminum outside bent pieces that you would find with like their Spectre and all that. But it also has acrylic covers. And then inside it has a uh, spot for, this looks like it's gonna be a DDC type version. So that's what's in there. We'll take a look at that in a sec. and. The side panel loosened up a little bit. Yeah, some of the screws are loose. That happens with shipping. Can't help it, vibrations of the plane and stuff. This flew all the way from Australia. I think it went, if I'm not mistaken, I believe if I looked at the tracking, it went by way of Australia to Alaska to Oakland or LA. So that's like <laughs> to get it done, right? I don't know why anything coming from like Asia, Australia goes to Alaska and then down. That seems a little out of the way. Anyway, um, so we have a fitting there and we have a fitting there and we have a plug there and a plug there. But you can see it has a distro plate built in. So this is pretty sick. Oh, and then we've got ventilation on the top, right? Because obviously if we're pulling air in and it's got these solid panels, air has to be able to make its way out and some on the bottom. I feel like these feet maybe aren't tall enough for the ones on the bottom. But anyway, so let's open this sucker up. This is why we have this RGB now, so we can make it glow if we want. This is pretty sick though, because of the fact that it has the pump built, well, the pump mount built into it, means that we'd at least be able to have our, uh, is that the right size? Yeah. We'd be able to have our pump and two rads and fans and everything in there. Having the box is cool and all, and this is Plexi, by the way, as you can see, not glass. Having this all mounted in here is great, but we also need to, like, how do we get power to it? Or just send me that picture? Yeah. Just copy it. It's on their website. Okay. But. Uh, 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 Hold on, Nick. Dude, so like, I found on their website that this is the 240 versus the dual 560, and they have a quad 560. <laughs> Never put it, look, there's, there's very few brands that are more water cooling enthusiasts than I feel like I am. And um, Singularity is it. Like there, <laughs> Okay, so I wanna mount up some rads right now. And I started thinking like this would actually be a perfect example of a future video we could do about um, one rad heating up another rad. So the, this is like the example of you have a top radiator and you have a front radiator. And a lot of people have always complained that if you pull in intake through the front, then you warm up that air, right? Because as the air goes through the rad, it's picking up heat from the water. And then that air is in the case. 
And then if you have a top exhaust rad, that hotter air goes through the exhaust rad out the top. So then you'd make that top radiator hotter than it needs to be because you're using warm air. Even though that radiator is also picking up, the, it has the same warmth in it of the front rad, but the front rad also cools, helps cool down the loop. So there's so much physics here that we would actually be able to use this box to test. Because what I was thinking about right now is if we have our two radiators inside the box, in fact, I can go and just mount these two, but the fans, do we have cross, do we do cross flow? Do we have one side pull in cool air, push it across and then exhaust the other side? So it's a cross flow. Warmer air would be hitting one side versus the other. So one side would be getting super cool air from outside, it'd be warmed up, and then we would have that warmer air hitting the other rad exhausting through. So the question would be whether or not that would be less efficient versus whether or not we were to have them say both bringing air from the outside and then smooshing that air together and then exhaust out the top through positive pressure. You can see we've got that there, but we also have a vent at the bottom. So some of the air would also make it out the bottom. So this is where I need you guys to like this video and comment down below if you want me to do that video now where I have the different fan orientations to determine which is going to be the most efficient. And then we would have to do something like a 4090 and a CPU on there because we would need to get a lot of heat in that loop to really sort of demonstrate that. So let me mount up the radiators real quick. Then I'll put the fans in there uh, and then we'll see how much room we have because I like how they have everything very centralized right here on the distro plate because obviously as you have rad and fans, you're gonna be pushing that stuff in and then the center is open to still access for your tubing and stuff. So let me see if I can't get this sort of like plumbed up and get a DDC in here. I, I should have a DDC pump and then that'll be a fun video to play with later. Okay, so I've got the guts in there minus the DDC. I actually don't have a DDC pump that I can put in there, so I gotta order one. I also wanna order some quick disconnects because this is gonna need tubing with quick disconnects coming out of it so I can easily hook it up to systems for testing and stuff. Um, anyway, the way I have the fans oriented right now are both intakes. They're on medium speed. These are the Be Quiet Silent Wings Pro 4s. So they've got the hub with the uh, medium, high, and then like, ultra high speed. So I'm putting them on medium, which I think is like 1500 RPM or something for these fans. They're pretty high. Um, so that's full intake with exhausting out the top as well as the bottom, although the bottom's pretty closed off. The feet aren't that tall. One of the things I did on the inside is I used the Singularity Computer's um, power distribution block. So I've got all the fans going to that one block. It's also an ARGB. I didn't put the, the RGB in there yet. There's no point um, because one of the things I like about the DDC is the fact that it can also run off a three pin power. So as long as this lead, which will be a, however long as it needs to be, and it's coming out of one of those plugs that they had one at the top and one at the bottom. So I took the cover off. So it's just coming out of there. Um, I could custom make one of these wires to be as long as I need to reach into a computer or something. Um, DDC pumps uh, can run off three pin PWM or four pin PWM. And most motherboards these days do have a high amp four pin header, which would be enough to run these fans and the pump. So then I'm only got one cable. I'd kind of want to just say, screw the lighting at that point. So I don't have to run another ARGB cable, but I could, it wouldn't be that hard. So now it's in there on that distribution block if I decide to. So the way the loop order goes, and I'll have Phil try, try and get some close ups with the side cover off. The cover's on right now, the clear plexi, because I want to test the airflow and the noise. Um, it's basically going, so the pump goes out automatically. You have, you have no choice. The, the pump is always going to leave the, the, the water box. So it goes pump down into here, out. So I'll have some tubing here with a quick disconnect, go through the system back in through here. So this is going to need uh, a fitting on both sides, goes through there and then into a 45 degree fitting that I have. So that's not too tight of a bend. This is, this is a thin wall tubing, so it can kink pretty easy. In fact, here it is right here. It's the XSPC black rubber. Uh, I like the black rubber because it doesn't leach plasticizer like clear tubing does, but it tends to kink pretty easy. So you don't want to put tight bends on it without any sort of a coil on it. You, I could put a coil on this and get tighter bends, but I'm not. Um, so anyway, I had the 45 on there just to relieve the amount of radius I needed in the tubing. So anyway, it's coming out or back into the box, going up into the top rad, straight across the other rad into the other radiator through the rad and then down into the return of the, the distro plate, which is at the bottom. So I kind of find it interesting that it's at the bottom, but I guess that means we'll guarantee we're gonna get plenty of, always have fluid back into fluid rather than it percolating and trickling down in if the water level starts to drop. So with that said, I've got my um, 
power supply right here set to 12 volts. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And as soon as I plug in these fans, they're gonna go to medium speed. And I'm really curious as to what the noise level is gonna be. I don't have a decibel meter or anything. I'm just kind of using my ears, which is I guess what you do when you listen. But it's about, I don't know, a half meter away from me. It'd probably be much farther away from you normally on a desk or something if you were doing that. I'm just kind of listening for the tone. I wanna see if with these fan filters on the side, um, how much turbulent sound there is. Cause the, the air is gonna have to come through the, the, the fan filter, then through the grate material that's in the, the aluminum. So like I mentioned earlier, this is bent aluminum. It's 6061 anodized aluminum. And then uh, it's gotta go through the radiator. And then obviously the air is gonna be smashing into each other, which is gonna cause some more turbulence and hopefully push each other up. I almost feel like having a little diverter plate to like scoop the air up would be neat, but we could deal with that later if we wanna customize it. So with all that said, here is what the noise profile is like. Well, I can actually feel the air coming out the bottom. I can feel it out coming out the hole that I took this cover off of. It's actually not that bad. I feel like the power supply fan is louder than this is actually. Okay. It's actually not that loud. I have no way of measuring the airflow, but I, I can tell you right now with the amount of air that's coming through this, it definitely would be cooling off the radiators. What I want to test right now is if I take the side panel off, probably shouldn't really change too much noise profile wise, but I want to go in the next setting up on the fans and see what happens. This thing is only drawing 0.3 amps with these four fans. So that's another thing I wanted to test right now was how much headroom do I have? Most, most fan headers, even the low amp ones can handle an amp, one amp. This is 0.3 with four fans going. The DDC is not gonna pull that much amps. Yeah, so I can feel air coming this way, that's for sure. Hardly anything out the top now, it makes sense. That's the path of least resistance, so. Still 1.2 amps, that's not bad because uh, the high amp headers I think are two or three amp. Dude, that's a lot of airflow right there. What if I put this back on now? Oh yeah, you hear the resistance. This actually works out really well though as a test box because now if I need more cooling capacity, then I could turn up the fans, make them faster. But I honestly, the lowest setting I think is gonna be just fine. So anyway, there's, there's the inside you can see now with the side cover off. And that's also with the fan filters on. Let me take these filters off real quick too and see if we get any improvement. There's a significant amount of airflow improvement by taking these off. The porosity on these isn't great. It's less, it's way less than 50%. Um, it's because it has to be small enough to catch dust particles. I'm one of those people that would rather open the side panel, which is four bolt, four of these hex screws and blow it out and uh, like once a month or whatever and be fine with it. I, I would not want it because here's the thing. If I need to clean those filters, I have to unscrew them anyway. And there's twice as many of those screws to remove the filters than it is the four holding the one side panel on. Because you don't want to blow it into the system because then you just, what's the point of the filter? So if you need to take the filter off, there's two of them. If you're using two intakes like I am, there's twice as many screws that way. So taking them off is the better way. And then much improved airflow. And Daniel did say he was gonna send me their 560 by two, which I think would be really cool. And for a water cooling testing station, that would be actually be pretty sick because we would wanna make sure that the last thing that we're doing when testing a water block or something is being limited by our radiators. So if our radiator cooling solution is under or too close to the rating of the so for instance, if we're trying to cool 600 watts of heat and we have 650 watts or 700 watts of radiator, um, that's too close to its max workload. So if we can put, have so much cooling in there that the only thing limiting our overall temperatures is gonna be the transfer rate between the heat source and the cooler, which in this case would be water blocks and then dies on either GPU or CPU, then that would be better. I think two 240s with the fan speeds that I have capable with this, uh, are gonna be fine, but the two 560s would be cool. They also have four 560 options, which is just nuts. Maybe, I don't know if that was discontinued or not. I know they have the two 560s. I like the way this looks without the fan filters because you can see the awesome milling that they do. They do a lot of, they pay a lot to have this this way. So I don't know why, would, why you wouldn't want that. Um, anyway, if, then if I wanted to, I could even take off the top filter but I guess I wouldn't do that. One, because it's recessed in there and two, there's no great, like there's no grill material on the top. 
So it would just be an open hole. So I wouldn't want to do that. All right, there you go. Um, this was, I was not expecting this. It showed up and I went, hey, let's talk about this today. This could be fun. I mean, after all, I am a water cooling enthusiast. So why not talk about something from arguably the one of the best water cooling companies on the face of the planet, which is a small company. I love that. I love that one of the best companies is a small company. All right, with that said, guys, thanks for watching. I'll put the links down below. Oh, and the price, <clears throat> $350.